the Information Man Show. You are listening to Information Man. Life is what you make it. Life has been amazing. I can't see a way out. I've been stacking face down off canvases. I painted. I just spent the rain day on shit I can't afford, but that's the price I pay for the memories I'm making. I've been going places. I've been shaking hands for a chance to really make it. What's up, everybody? It's the Information Man Show. All right, everybody. Okay, everybody, I, I hope you could hear me. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, do me the biggest favor and share this video. Um, subscribe to the channel. If you have not had a chance to subscribe, definitely like the video. If you can do that, that definitely is appreciated. And if there's a video on my channel that you have yet to finish watching or see, go ahead and look through my archives and uh, check out some videos on this channel. And of course, you know, I have a podcast channel, the Information Man Speaks podcast. Scroll down my page here and subscribe to the second channel if you could. And I really appreciate that. I want to get into this issue right now. This is DMX. Uh, the brother has passed away at 50 years old. Um, he was struggling with drug abuse, which he has struggled with since he was 14 years old. There's a video clip on here where he'll talk about briefly in a podcast about how he was introduced to the drugs as a child because he had a, he was smoking marijuana and it got laced with crack cocaine. That was the origins or the beginning uh, of his drug addiction that he battled with. Now, in terms of his music, he was amazing. I'm going to show you a video that just kind of breaks that down, speaks to it better than I could ever could. But his music, his music was amazing. Uh, he definitely was a rough rider. As he, used to, he was a part of the rough rider. He was the leader of that group. And uh, he, he moved by the beat of his own drum. And then at some point in time, uh, DMX became very spiritual. He talked about the Bible, about God, about uh, some of the treacherous things that we're dealing with in this society. And this is one of the things I want to say to the, especially to the men out there that you cannot be afraid to change and transform your life. You have to be willing to change and transform your life. Um, DMX said that he would not change. I think it was more in terms to his belief in God, but I think as a man, and I said this on my first video about DMX on my podcasting channel, that as a man, you must grow, you must develop, you must learn from your mistakes, but a wise man really learns from the mistakes of others rather than his own mistakes. Now, with that said, DMX he exposed some things. He talked about the music business, some of the things you have to do to kiss that butt to get your records played. He went through some battle with the music industry. He never saw himself as part of the industry. He saw himself as just an artist that was happens to be in the industry. These are some of the things that he said, and I've got the video clips or the audio clips for you to hear this. But I think there's a lot to be learned because he had a lot of advice that he would give in parables but oftentimes, and I think men, I'm talking to men, but everybody out there can take this cautionary tale that the biggest struggle we have is following the advice, our own advice that we give to other people. I think that's what the brother struggled with is that he could, he could not follow his own advice that he was, 
he was putting out. He, he struggled with that because the drug addiction is a disease and there's people out there who have family members. You may have a family member right now who struggles with drug abuse and you've been working with them for years in and out. It's a, it's a very, it's a very hard thing. Um, I want to say we should definitely, we need to give prayers to his family, to his children. He leaves, uh, he has daughters and sons. So the, the, the brother has a legacy that he's left behind, not just music, but the legacy of children who will bear his last name and who have to move forward. I think the, they would have to move forward in life using their father's memory and what he did positive to motivate them to overcome and achieve in life. I think the uh, hip hop community, everyone out there is pouring in their prayers uh, to the family and what has happened. Now we know just a week ago, it was reported that he um, may have overdosed uh, by drugs. And therefore, uh, as a result, he had a heart attack. And therefore, uh, we were, it was reported by, I believe, TMZ originally that he was placed in uh, White Plains Hospital, New York, where he uh, was in a coma. And there was a lot of stuff going on on social media where people were throwing around that he was already uh, had deceased. He was already no longer with us in the third dimension. And then there were people that were saying, no, he's, he's alive. Stop putting that kind of energy out there. And then we find out on Friday that he is no longer with us. Uh, so it's kind of hard to know what to believe because there were things flying around on social media. And of course you can't always, um, you know, the music industry and Holly weird, you can't always believe what they're telling you to, because let's keep it real. hundred percent. Uh, DMX was very outspoken and he had a lot of criticism for the music industry and those that were in it that were playing games. So I think the cautionary tale here is as a man, we must overcome our demons, whether it be drugs, alcohol, women, whatever it may be, whatever is your burden that you carry in life. Because as a man, we all carry a burden as people. We all carry some type of burden, something that we're struggling with. You've got to figure out, you've got to ask for help, how you can overcome because any of us can be, uh, can take a fall from that, which is our demon. Okay. And so we should not just cast out the stone and, uh, throw out a stone and judge DMX. Yes. He had his problems, his run-ins with the law, but that wasn't just who the man was. We need to remember the best of him and understand that he was struggling with something that he had been struggling with for years and we can learn something from it. Of course, you can learn not to use drugs. Of course, you can learn. As I said, a wise man learns from other people's mistakes. There's a lot to learn from the mistakes that DMX made in his life. And then there's a lot to learn from the positive messaging in his music, the energy in his music. A lot of people were just like, oh, this guy is just straight gangster music. And no, if you really listen to DMX's music, there was a lot of gems and pearls in the music, a lot of messages that the brother was giving us. I'm going to play right now the video clip. It gives a more broader view of the brother's career. And um, I want to thank all of you for being here, Tell the truth. for participating and supporting the channel. You know, I got these goofy glasses and I'm going to give the brother the proper... Um, Breaking news, here comes DM, DMX. And um, here we go. And yeah, here we go. DMX was the first and only rapper to have his first five albums consecutively debut at number one on Billboard. But his successful music career was riddled with arrests and drug abuse, stemming from what he says was a childhood of abuse and betrayal. Born in Mount Vernon, New York in 1970, DMX and his family moved to Yonkers for more affordable housing when he was a child. Trouble started early. 
He spent much of his youth in and out of group homes and juvenile centers, he wrote, in an autobiography published in 2002. According to him, his first run-in with the law and detention came at just seven years old. Among his nights in a juvenile detention center as a teen, DMX wrote he found a way to escape his troubled reality, music. In 1998, when the music world was still reeling from the death of two hip-hop greats, Tupac and Biggie, DMX blazed the scene, taking the reins as a hit-making MC. His first record, Get At Me Dog, was certified gold. His first album debuted at number one on the Billboard Albums chart, selling a quarter of a million records in its first week. He even starred in blockbuster movies. While his acting and music earned him fame, DMX kept it real with fans about what his life was really like. A Christian, he often prayed before and during performances, in interviews, and on Instagram Live. He was vocal about his rough upbringing in his music and in interviews. In a 2020 interview on People's Party with Talib Kweli, he here broke here. down as he recounted his introduction to drugs at 14. I had the blood, I'm like, like, I was no longer focused on the money. It, 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 I never felt like this. I later found out that he, uh, he laced the blood with, with, with the crack. Well, how would you do that to a child? Never giving up hope, DMX wanted to be a better man. He sat down with GQ magazine in 2019, where he opened up about overcoming the abuse he suffered as a child. He entered into rehab, even sat down with Ian Van Zant. Do you have a drug problem now? I will always have a drug problem. Tell me about that. Um, it, just because you stop getting high doesn't mean that you don't have the problem, because it's a constant fight every day. But the controversial interview left DMX storming off set in a rage after being confronted about his drug abuse. While his story was troubled, he remained a man of faith, never giving up his quest to become better. Okay, let me play uh, everybody. I thank you for watching this. You can't ignore it. I'm transforming now. These cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down the All right, everybody. Like Peace to you. Hornets. When I'm performing, never boring. Now you can't afford it. Champagne, Perrier. Finish friends on my face. Looking like a front of D. D's no Cartier. Pockets deep, 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 bro. I can make it in my seat, bro. Do you approve me, bro? Okay. So as you can see, That definitely was a great clip because it kind of summarized his career. Another thing that was great about it is, well, it's not great because you can see he broke down about how he got introduced to the drug use. It's not great for anybody to be on drugs, but the fact of the matter is it shows you another side of DMX and what he struggled with. And he said he got a blunt that he was smoking as a 14 year old teenager was laced by someone, I guess he entrusted and it blew his mind away. And then from there he struggled over the years with the drug use being in and out of jail, in and out of court cases of oh, these are things that took a toll on him. This is why I'm saying as a man, because he is a man, we as men can learn from the cautionary tale of DMX because you know, he seemingly had it all women, cars, um, money, um, popularity, all these different things that can also be demons. If we don't control it, a lot of times people can let the, uh, physical, the superficial things in life control them when you need to be in control of that, which is around you. And when you get on drugs and alcohol and substances, it actually controls you. And now, for, therefore, you're not making the proper decisions as a man for yourself personally, for your family and those around you. And we've seen this story before with other artists um, who had some type of drug. Michael Jackson, uh, you know, Prince, 
all these different artists who have struggled with some type of issue, whether it be prescription drugs, substances. And then on the other hand, when these artists pass in this way, it also makes you question is what we're hearing from the news true. Did he really, this is this really how he died? Is it really, was it really by a, uh, a overdose on drugs, which brought on a heart attack? How do we know if these things are true? How do we know if any of the people that we've looked up to, they really have passed away the way the media tells us, because we know again, how treacherous the music business can be. What I want to do here is I'm going to play a clip and uh, it's going to be some profanity in it. So it is what it is. Cause DM DMX was real like this. He's talking about the music business and some of the things that he didn't appreciate about it. And once again, this is going to be raw, unapologetic DMX. Tell the truth. And uh, here it is. Yeah, man. Yeah, they, they got a whole new staff now, so I got to go in and see what's up. You know what I'm saying? Now, you got issues with the industry. What's going down with the industry, dog? The industry is, a, is, 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 is full of a bunch of dick-sucking, dick-riding, bending over the desk-ass niggas, straight up like that. Whoever don't like it, bring it, nigga. Bring it. I don't give a fuck. Bring it. Bring it, bitch. They, they, they got, they got these new, this new breed of rapper that's, that's paying DJs to play their shit. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they sucking the, the, the uh, record label executive dicks, and it's like they, they, there's too much of that going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let me be me. Let me be the artist that I am and just play my motherfucking music. You know what I mean? Exactly. Now they want you all up under this, you know, sitting at the, at the going to dinner with them and shit like that, and, you know, all that favor for a favor shit. I don't get down like that. Look, I'll give you the music. You give my money. That's it. Uh, a lot of the love I had... For wanting to, you know, for wanting to be a part of the industry is not there anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I don't See? even associate myself with the industry. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's right. I'm not an industry artist. I'm an artist in the industry. Mm. You know? And you've always stood alone and, and yeah. you know, bloodline. You're hanging with niggas. I'm not, I'm not, you're not going to see me at every party, every industry party, all the clubs. I go somewhere quiet, man, shoot pool with me and my man's in them. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of shit I, that's the type of shit I do. You know what I'm saying? Fuck my remote control cars, jump on the four wheelers. You know what I mean? I ain't with all that in the club shit, Tell throwing it up and all that bullshit. I ain't got time for that shit, man. I mean, because then you find yourself doing that same shit every fucking day. What, are you a fucking alcoholic? You know what I mean? Come on, man. Give it a fucking break, man. Live a little, you know what I mean? I play with my kids, man. I play with my toys. I play with my dogs, man. You know what I'm saying? We go somewhere, shoot pool. We have, we do what the fuck we do. You know what I mean? We, that's why you see us in places that you don't normally see. And you're like, damn, why are you here? Well, I'm here because I'm... Get, why are you here, motherfucker? <laughs> you here playing video games. Hey, I ain't acting. Fuck. Mm. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers had the nerve to tell me one time, I said, yo, why, why I can't have two videos playing at the same time? Oh, because we don't want your videos to compete with each other. But then I turn on the motherfucking TV, I ain't gonna say no artist names, but they got three videos back to back. Exactly. I'm like, you feeding me fucking bullshit, exactly. and you sucking these niggas' dicks all crazy, exactly. man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yo, I had to punch one nigga in his face up there, man. After that, I was like, I'm not going to the office no more. Is that how he went down? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a grown ass motherfucking man, and I ain't got time to be playing no kid games, man. So once I see I'm not dealing with a man, and he disrespects me, I'm gonna break his fucking jaw. Exactly. You keep him mad straight up in there, eh? Straight up. Okay, so that was uh, DMX. Uh, he was interviewed. The guy that was interviewing him kind of was ridiculous. Uh, some English talking guy, and you can hear him sitting up there talking about, you keeping it real street, are you? You know, it, it, I don't know why we give interviews to people like that who basically make stereotypes and they're basically laughing at us when we're speaking our truth about something. But nevertheless, DMX gave the interview, spoke his mind, spoke the way he felt about the things that have been going on within the music industry. And um, I got to, I got to, I just got to say he, he kept it a hundred percent real there because uh, he gave you an insight into what was really going on in the music industry. I don't know how many people really paid attention to what DMX was saying about the music industry and how he was being treated compared to other artists when he had done something that no one else has done. I think he said he had two, um, he had went platinum, double platinum uh, first to do it. And, that, and then the, the statement that he said that I thought was very candid is when he said that they would not play all of his music, his hit songs all back to back, but he would see other artists 
that were pl- having their music being played back to back. I just think that uh, DMX was ahead of his time when it came to rap music. He was way ahead of his time. I, I believe if he had a, come out as a new artist today, in today's absence fear, maybe he could have been able to do the things that he was not really being looked, he was being looked down upon back then. But then again, the music industry, because back then it really was about the, the uh, record companies and the labels and all of that. And you got guys today who are able to produce their music without being a part of some big music conglomerate. I don't know. Um, it it would have been interesting to see what he could have done in this era. But I think this era at the same time might not have been ready for him as well because he was so raw. And it's unfortunate that the drug use really took away a lot from just his, from his music and from the man himself, because he was so entrenched in it, which was causing him to go to, to jail. Unfortunately, um, it just would have been great to see what he could have become. If you remove the drug use, because he still, he was a great artist. And like I said, he was struggling with something that uh, we know people like DMX, because he's so real that were struggling with the same types of issues in our family people that we've known and it, and, it, and it's a day by day thing when you're trying to recover from drug use. He even said it himself. He was very candid in some videos where he says every day, he says, just because I'm not using, it doesn't mean that I'm not a drug addict because I'm still b- dealing with it day in and day out. It's a struggle, good days and bad days. Um, Let me read something. Cause like I said, you don't know what you can believe what's real. Now, they're saying, according to TMZ, that virtually uh, DMX uh, virtually had no brain functioning after he was deprived of oxygen for nearly 30 minutes following his overdose. Brain function never returned. By Thursday, his organs, this was this past Thursday, began uh, failing while he remained on life support in a New York hospital, which is right White Plains. New York. Many people in X's family were at the hospital over the last week, including his mom, his fiance, and many of his kids. A rep for his family tells TMC, we are deeply saddened to announce to today that our loved one DMX birth name, Earl Simmons, passed away at 50 years old at White Plains Hospital with his family by his side after being placed on life support the past few days. Earl was a warrior who fought till the very end, according to the family and friends is what they're saying. The statement continues. He loved his family, right? He loved his family with all of his heart and and his children. He spent, he spent with, with the time he cherished the time that he spent with his family and loved ones. Earl Simmons, DMX, as we know him, Music inspired countless fans across the world and his iconic legacy will live on forever. We appreciate all the love and support during his incredible, difficult, this incredible, difficult time. Please respect our privacy as we grieve the loss of our brother, father, uncle, and the man the world knew as DMX. We will share information about his memorial service once details are finalized. DMX got his start in music back in the 1980s, as everyone knows, performing with Reddy Ron while serving time behind bars. Let me just say this. Let me write this right, write it down. It's called Reddy Ron. Uh, let me just say this. You've had people like LL Cool J, Jay Zoo. He's recorded with these folks here. Let me read. Let me read on until the final dedication, dedicate to himself to music full time in 1990. So he fully dedicated himself. He got into music in the the early eighties. Then he fully dedicated himself to music, um, to music in the 1990s. He eventually got signed to Columbia records, rough, rough house and appeared on a recording with Jay Z, LL Cool J, Maze, and even the rock band, some 41. Okay. 
it wasn't until 1998 that he truly broke out when he released his Rough Riders debut studio album. It's dark and hell is hot to critical mainstream acclaim, not to mention he added his new Kane personal personality. Let me see his own, uh, you know, his own Kenneth personality, which is the fact that we know that he's known famously for that voice. <laughs> I mean, he had that strong voice with a strong bass. He would really uh, get your attention. That's what I remember about the brother. He gets your attention with that strong bass voice that he would use in his music to get your attention, to bring to call to action to who he was, his music, his legacy, and what have you. So what I want to do to end this is I have a about a nine-minute audio of him. I think he was in, uh, I want to say, uh, where was he at? I think he was somewhere in Tennessee. He was somewhere. Um, he was somewhere in the South. I thought he was in New York, but he was actually Nashville. He was in Nashville, somewhere in the South, Nashville, Tennessee. So I was right. He was in the state of Tennessee. He was in a park, and someone asked him some candid questions. I think they were feminists, and um, he talked about God, Jesus, the religion, and he gave us some parables and some warnings that I think we can take away from this brother. So what I want to do is I want to turn that on and let you hear what the brother was saying. So let me see if this is going to work for me, and here we go. I'm going to make you listen. Believe that. He's going to sit you down. He will sit you down. And that's just what it is. This is what it is. Tell the truth. <clears throat> um, Tell the truth. There's some that were uh, called home to God. And uh, others who became aware of the grace that God was willing to give them by bringing them back from the brink of death. Scarface. Amen. It's God face. Making a recovery. Love you, brother. You know? On the other hand, Fred the God son. He's with God. Mm, God's son. Come on. Come on. He's with God right now. You know? I can lose it to the family. I can lose it to the family of uh everyone that's lost someone. You know, it's a family member or a friend. You know, we feel that pain. But we feel that pain because we're going to miss them being with us. Right. You know, if you think about where they are, hey, they're in a better place. <laughs> they're in a better place. Mm. Mm. The word says, when I next observed the oppression that take place under the sun, I saw the tears of the oppressed. And they have no one to comfort them. Their opportunities will power, but they have no one to comfort them. So I declare that the dead who have already died are more fortunate than the living who are still alive. But happier than both are those who have never existed, who haven't witnessed the terrible things that happen under the sun. Ecclesiastes 4. I mean, like, like, like. The best thing that we can hope for, the most important thing we can hope for, or pray for, or ask for, is that our desires coincide with God's will. Because at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, it's going to be God's will. It's always going to be God's will. And you try to understand what his, you know, uh, why he does what he does, and he's going to end up with a headache. Just, there is a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens. A time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted. A time mm -hmm. for killing and a time for healing. Right. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for crying and a time for laughing. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones. That's right. And a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces. A time for, ooh, ooh. A time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces. What? Come on, come on, come on, come on. A time for searching and a time for losing. Mm -hmm. A time for keeping, a time for throwing away. That's right. A time for tearing, a time for repairing. A time for keeping silent, and a time for speaking. 
That's right. A time for loving and time for hating. A time for war, a time for peace. I mean, like I said, it goes back to, you know, you're going to start with a prayer, you're going to listen to a prayer. Yo. There are no words more powerful Tell the truth. than the book. And your prayer, your own prayer, will do a lot better than someone else praying for you. Hmm. Powerful. Who hasn't, whoever hasn't given their life to Jesus yet, whoever hasn't surrendered all the way, though there may be some of you who don't know how, I'm going to walk you through that right now. If you're serious about it, you don't got to be serious, but they, they, it, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't just, hey. But if you're serious about it, right now, giving your life to the Lord, say it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. Mm. I repent for my sins. And right this moment, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's that simple. It's that simple, but you got to mean it. But you got to mean it. You got to mean it. Everything that's happened is God's will. It's facts. Don't try to understand it. Just, 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 just get that relationship with him. Get that relationship with him. And, and even the things you don't understand won't be as hard on you as it would be if you try to understand it. Mm. It's crazy. I woke up this morning and it's like, with chills, with chills, you know, God put it on my heart to speak. I said, this, you know, this, this is new to me. This is, you know, that's not what I do. Come on, I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't, you know, with showing what everybody, what I'm doing every minute. That's just not me. That's not how I get down. You know what I'm saying? You see me when you see me. It is what it is. You know what mm. I'm saying? I ain't going to change. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. You know? Now, I want to stop right there because DM, DMX says he's not going to change. In my podcast, I had spoke about the fact that as a man, you do need to change. You do need to uh, rebirth yourself from the things that you are doing. But I think what he meant by what he said right there is that I think he's not going to change from his belief in God and how he sees God how and how he treats people around him uh, he's going to stay true to himself but i must re reemphasize the fact that as a man and i don't know if this could be the downfall or not we as men have to grow develop and change given the circumstances and the environment that we're in and what we're going through because without change you can't truly transform Tell the truth. That which is negative that you're trying to get away from and reach. Uh, but I do believe that if you, if you have a strong spiritual belief in God, that can carry you through, but it has to have action behind it. Words don't have action unless you put words or things, but action is what you've got to put behind those things to make them reality. Let's go back into what uh, brother uh, DMX is saying here, I want to say once again, my prayer goes out to his family, uh, loved ones. And, uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, that he's no longer with us in the third dimension. Let's go back. I love who I am. I'm God's child. We all are. We all are. If you don't know it, you're going to miss out on, 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 on. That's true. We are. So many blessings that he has for you, that he has for you. It's true. And it comes from insight. It just comes from, come from being aware. Being aware. The word says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Perish is not always dying. It's being lost. Mm. Not being able to found. Not, not being able to be found. Right. Let 
Hmm. That's true. Ecclesiastes 3, 16. I saw something else under the sun. In the place of justice, there was wickedness. In the place of what was right, there was wickedness again. I thought to myself, God will judge both religious, both righteous and wicked people. Because it's a time for every matter and every deed. Oh, he's telling you right here. He's telling you. Let me do what I do and fall in. That's what it boils down to, man. Again, you know, look, every album is a prayer. You know, and, and, and normally I grasp at every opportunity to pray. I'm saying I won't. But it's more important that you learn how to pray for yourself. Mm. Pray for yourself. Because you might not always have somebody with you that can pray. You might not always be able to get in touch with somebody that can say a prayer for you. And you need a prayer. God has given you the time. He's given you the time to become familiar with, 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 with you know, what's going on, what's, how are you supposed to move? Tell the truth. We've lost a lot of people. Tell the truth. And again, my condolences go to their families. Like the word said, they're better off than we are. When you think about it, what hurts the most is that we won't. We won't see them again. They won't be here with us. Because we're suffering. Yeah. We're suffering. But as long as you got God, it's going to be all right. With God, or whatever it is, whatever it is, it's going to be all right. When you truly have God, whatever it is, it's going to be all right. Because you don't know that's God's will. That's right. The story has already been written. It's already been written. Tell the truth. It speaks to him before we were born, and it refers to Tell after. Tell the truth. Already gone. DMX is uh, dropping some pearls of wisdom there. And like I said earlier before, a lot of us can have these kind of pearls of wisdom, but sometimes it's very difficult for us to implement these pearls of wisdom upon ourselves. Uh, the very things that we can say to inspire others. Um, and, and back in my mind, uh, it would have been incredible if DMX uh, could have overcome his substance abuse problem and put it completely behind him. But he's something that he struggled with. And I'm going to say this again. I don't want to sound conspirator. We really, at the end of the day, don't really know what was really going on behind the scenes. We mainly know what the media wants us to know. There's always two sides to a story as to why something happens. Everybody, I appreciate you watching the video, uh, supporting my channel. I thank you. This is the Information Man Show. I will be back with more uh, presentations, uh, more live streams, more interviews. Check out the second channel, the Information Man Speaks podcast, if you can. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and definitely make sure that if you are a content creator yourself, that you share this in your social media as well, as well as your, the community tab, because I really uh, appreciate that. Thank you all. And, uh, this is very, you know, tough. I, I grew up watching, uh, you know, back in the nineties when he really took the scene by storm I was in my 20s. So that era of that music, of rap music, it definitely connected with me. I don't know where I, where rap music is going today. I don't, personally don't think it's that great. I think that uh, we need more DMX people who are truth tellers like this, brother. And um, it's very difficult that the one thing that appears to have brought him down is the addiction to the substances everybody take care of yourself i'll be back with more peace everybody this is the information man show peace you are listening to information
Life is what you make it, my shit's been amazing I can't see a way out, I've been stacking face down off canvases I painted I just spent the rain day on shit I can't afford But that's the price I pay for the memories I'm making I've been going places, I've been shaking hands for a chance to really make it This life is so abrasive, that's why I get most caving All this shit I'm laying, and it's only the foundation I've been going crazy, just trying to find a way I was in a basement Trying to turn the page, I was going through the face. But nobody see my face. I was chasing at the paper, been all the for the ways. But everything again, and I didn't let the rules. I've been breaking rules, I've been making moves. Peace, everybody. Now it's going how I see it through my lens, but it's stuck in my head. I can't seem to get away from it. I went out of my way. I'm trying to feel the eye again. I've lost somewhere in my head. I've been had it all on my own Holding tight to the patch I was the man at the edge I wish we never met I'm scared of being without you Afraid no one ever know me I'm at the edge And I can't get us out of my head yet Looking like who I'm becoming It's all I ever wanted Never like me when you're sober when I'm lonely, got me looking in the mirror for the cell diagnosis. Hell, I live in the me for the ever get to know me. They tell me that you need me, but your action didn't show it. Knowing that you play the angles, and I'm seeing through your motives. But the weight down on my shoulder, found a way to hold it. I can't keep my focus, Betty, keep composure. I win, I've been coping with all the pressure that I'm fed. Make it hard to hold my head, make it hard to get to sleep. Like I'm slipping from the edge. Peace, Try everybody. Right like the bronx with the lead. Life is not a guarantee. Niggas dying by the clip. Still prescribed a deal of mess. Not a way to flee the scene. I've been trying to get a grip. Onto something out of reach. Life is speeding to a peak. It's how I realize that I'm not the man I wanna be. I've been running for myself. We all afraid to die alone. Forget us all I'll ever be. I've been scrolling down a feet. Afraid to never get to see the type of liberation that we really need to set us all free. I went out of my way. I'm trying to feel the eye again. I'm lost somewhere in my head. Information.